Uh, next, we have Dr. Wayne Franklin from down the street at Texas Children's, where he serves as the director of the Adult Congenital Heart Program, here to talk to us about uh, L transposition and heterotaxy. Okay, I have uh, the task of trying to get us back on time a little bit. Um, Rich stole a lot of my thunder in my, my talk. This topic is not as cool as detransposition, uh, but we'll, we'll see if I can keep it interesting and we can battle hypoglycemia together. Uh, how do I look like that? Okay, uh, for some of you who aren't from Texas, we have different kind of lingo down here. So just to get everybody caught up here, oops. Um, where is that, is it that? So single is you, plural is y'all, and more than two is all y'all. So this is for all y'all in here. This, that's what this lecture is for. Uh, as I was told, I, I, you heard I, was, I work next door at Texas Children's Hospital, one of the other adult congenital heart uh, centers in Houston, and we're, and we're happy to, uh, to be invited and to participate here. Uh, so just some definitions again. Uh, Dr. Krasuski just mentioned a D transposition, which we heard a nice talk about. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit here about L transposition, L or Levo, which is really kind of, as I say, the, uh, the redheaded stepchild of a transposition. It's not as cool as, as dextro, but basically it's where the, the, in simple L transposition, the aorta is anterior and leftward. It's also got a couple other names. You may have heard of congenitally corrected. We tend to not like that because nothing is really correct about this, but that's uh, one option. Another option is um, ventricular inversion. That's probably the more anatomic uh, corrective uh, diagnosis. But uh, the embryology is the interesting, here, interesting thing here. So as you can see here in the cardiac tube, the whole problem is when the looping goes down, there's a, it, gets, it gets reversed or inverted. So the trunk is, is uh, looped this way. This is called L looping. And this is the opposite of what's supposed to happen. So normal hearts are, are D looped like this. But in this situation, it's L looped like this. And the aorta becomes anterior and leftward to the pulmonary artery. And that's the real problem in this defect. Um, so as Dr. Krzyzewski mentioned, the whole spaghetti and meatballs thing, I'm not sure what that means, but I know that these two yellow lines of, are sort of spaghetti, and they're in parallel. And you're not supposed to see that, right? They're supposed to be crossed normally. So again, for the fellows, if you see great, arter great arteries that are in parallel, it's some kind of transposition, either L or D, and you can see there. But the real interesting thing in this lesion is that the ventricles uh, are really where, where it all takes place, and really you have to define what ventricle is what when you're looking at your echo. And so if you can see here, uh, this is what defines an LV, is LV an, excuse me, an RV. An RV is more pyramidal in shape. It's got a lot more trabeculations. It's got a moderator band. There's three leaflets. Remember, the valve follows the ventricle. So if you see a, uh, three leaflets, specifically one with a septal attachment, the, the tricuspid valve tends to be septophilic. You can be pretty much assured that that's a tricuspid valve, thus a right ventricle. Meanwhile, the LV we know is more cylindrical or bullet-shaped. Uh, it's got a smooth surface in general, and there's two leaflets, and that mitral valve is going to be connected to the left ventricle, and that mitral septal leaflet is septophobic. So those are kind of how you differentiate the two. Looking at it sort of in a growth specimen, you have a normal part here. You have the apical displacement of the tricuspid valve. This leaflet here is, again, more septophilic. This is the mitral valve, smooth LV here, and the septal leaflet is more septophobic. Versus here, if you have LTGA, you can see here, again, apical displacement of that AV valve. That sort of gives you a hint. You have a moderator band. You have some a heavily trabeculated ventricle. And you have the septophilic leaflet of the tricuspid valve. So that kind of should tell you that this is more of a, of a, a left-sided uh, RV there. OK? Uh, what am I pointing here? Do I not advance? Maybe you could advance for me. There we go. OK, so on echo, it's going to look like this. Run the short axis here, it'll be anterior and rightward. And then again, your left atrium is here, and then your left vent, excuse me, your, your right ventricle is on the, on the LV uh, left side then. And then if you look on uh, echo, and I'm not going to do um, a Dr. Cedar's jumping jack here, but if you see it, it'll look like, that's what I pointed here. Let me try that one. Um, yeah, so they can see a left, you can see, excuse me, a right ventricle here, tricuspid valve. This is sort of be like the Dr. Cedar's equivalent of doing sort of a jumping back with your right arm and your left foot. So I won't ask to do that, but that's what it'll be. So things are, uh, are, are off there. And you can see there, uh, use this one to advance. Okay. 
And then you can see here in a, sort of the four chamber view um, that you have an apically displaced tricuspid valve. It, it does look abnormal, uh, ebstenoid here, and you can see a very uh, dilated uh, left atrium as well. And you can see that this valve is very regurgitant as well too. I can keep it, that's cool. A couple other things that are associated lesions with this. Uh, with the, uh, with tricus with the LTGA, you have an abnormal tricuspid valve. Oh, actually, I have this motion here. You have a VSD, often associated with it. You have pulmonic stenosis or subpulmonic stenosis at a normal tricuspid valve, as I mentioned. Also, coronary anomalies uh, and AV block. So all these patients certainly deserve an EKG as you, as you go. So a few words about heterotaxy syndrome, since it's, it's sort of related to this. Uh, hetero meaning different, taxi meaning arrangement. Uh, it's also known as isomerism of the atrial appendages, and this is kind of the, the wild and the wacky, but it's basically where a lot of the things can be abnormal in the chest and abdomen. So heart, thorax, and abdominal organs can be inverted across the right-left uh, axis of the body, as opposed to the normal atrial uh, and, and or, organ uh, situs solitus. So, what does, it look, what does it look like if you have uh, a normal arrangement here in uh, what's called situs solidus? In the right atrial isomerism or heterotaxy, you have more of a right atrial duplication. There's two right atria and the lungs are also abnormal. Uh, left atrial isomerism, there's a, a duplication of the left atria and the lungs are abnormal that way. And then if you have complete sort of situs uh, inverses, everything is inverted. You have dextrocardia, you have liver on the opposite side, gastric and stomach on the right, and the spleen on the right. So you'll see that here. So as I mentioned, that's kind of the, the summary of it. The things to mention that go along with it, particularly is the right atrial isomerism, you can have uh, uh, abnormal uh, coronary sinus and asplenia. We'll, we'll talk about splenic dysfunction in a minute. And in left atrial isomerism, you have abnormal systemic veins because it's the abnormality of the left side. So you can have uh, IBC interruption and polysplenia. So again, if you look, this is the normal situs, and you have situs and versus. Everything is opposite, including the heart is pointed dextrocardia. This is what it looks like on chest x-ray with the heart pointed to the right, liver here on the patient's left, gastric bubble on the patient's right, and also the uh, intestines are uh, uh, inverted as well, too. Here's just a picture of, the, of an interrupted IVC. Normally the IVC is gonna come right up, accept the uh, hepatic veins and go into the heart that way. But in this situation, uh, there can be an interrupted IVC where it continues via an azygous vein and, and, and insert here in the SVC. And that's in a sort of a normal cardiac anatomy. And you can even have this involved with abnormal cardiac anatomy as well. So just realize that when you think of heterotaxy, make sure you look at the systemic veins. This is a, a patient that we follow that's a hetero, that is a heterotaxy. I'm going to go, I don't know if I can go back, but uh, you can see here a very abnormal uh, tricuspid valve, uh, AV canal type defect. This guy ended up having a, a Fontan and did quite well, but he also has a lot of uh, systemic venous problems as well too. So um, as I mentioned, polysplenia, these patients can be f have polysplenia, but they can have functional asplenia. So even though they have a lot of spleens, they don't work very well. Uh, you can see here what it looks like on MRI. You see lots of spleen in here and in here. And then as you diagnose that, either on MRI or you can look for Howell Jolly bodies on um, peripheral smear. So if you see these uh, inclusion bodies here in your, right, in your red blood cells, that's a sign of, an, of abnormal splenic function. So that's it. Just to remember, uh, when you're in Texas, uh, feel free to, uh, to use the word y'all and all y'all. So thank you guys very much. And I hope you to see you at our conference uh, next year as well. Too. Thank you so much, Dr. Franklin. That was.